Hello and welcome back. The SHSU MBA Student Association is excited to present part two of the Spring 2021 MBA SA Virtual Book Club. My name is Jonathan Kinsey and I'm the Vice President of the MBA SA. Today we'll be discussing Living Into Our Values, the second section of Brene Brown's New York Times bestseller, Dare to Lead. But before we dive in, if you're not already following us, be sure to subscribe, find us on Instagram, join our group meet, and ring that bell for more content. The MBA Student Association is all about building networks and building careers, so let's get connected. More details are in the description below. For those listening in that may not have been as familiar with the book, let's recap a few things. Dr. Brene Brown has researched and authored several books surrounding courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. Dare to Lead organizes this research into four sections that aim to help cultivate readers into braver, more daring leaders. Today's discussion is focused on the second section, Living Into Our Values. With us today are a few colleagues that have joined me in reading through the second section. In this second section, Brene walks the reader through identifying their values and how to commit to living into them. In the book, she provided a list of these values, which you can see on the slide. Let's introduce ourselves and share with each other a few values from Brene's list that resonate with you. I'll go ahead and start. So on the list, some that resonate with me are uh, vulnerability, creativity, and teamwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss it on over to our one of our other two. I'll go ahead and toss it to Jamie. So I'm gonna switch on over here and we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Jamie, go ahead. What are your values? Awesome. Well, um, I wrote down a couple. I think it's really hard to narrow this down because there's so many great ones. Uh, the three that I wrote down are trust, teamwork, and leadership. I know leadership has been a really big one with, with me over the past year and how I've been working to develop myself. So I'm going to say that's my number one. And Clayton, what about you? So yeah, I'm, I'm Clayton Cottle. Uh, I, I guess the values that really stand out to me, every time I look through the list, I feel like I've adopted a new one. Um, but the first one is making a difference. That's something that's important to me. Um, like a life motto of mine is to help change the world. So making a difference is, is definitely something I can relate to. And then I also took the, the write your own there at the bottom and uh, on the page of the book and wrote uh, self-belief. Uh, those, are, those are two values that I hold pretty close to myself. So I noticed you, uh, you uh, wrote your own in, um, it, like, I guess, was there, I, I, uh, my, I guess my next question was going to be what, did, you know, obviously she has a giant list. Like, you know, was there, you know, obviously you found that there was some that were left off um, that I guess resonated with you, but like, what was, uh, were there anything interesting that I guess about the list itself that maybe um, were, uh, I don't know, um, stick out, that stuck out to you? Like, you know, is this type of, I guess, a, a usual values list that you would typically see from someone making something like this? Or is there just, is it, did you come up with anything that was interesting or kind of surprising to see on a values list for y'all? Mm. Stewardship. I feel like, oh, oh, sorry. I was going to say, no, I think no, no. stewardship is unique on this list and it is a very valuable thing, but a lot of people may not even know what that is or the value of what stewardship is. And you know, in my profession, I, I help fundraise for an organization. And so, you know, stewardship is huge in what I do. Um, so I, I, I found that a bit unique. Um, and sportsmanship, I mean, that kind of plays in with teamwork and, and connects a little bit there. So I think that's uh, interesting that there's very sim some that are very similar, I guess. I, I thought home was, mm. I guess it, it stood out to me in a way that I, not to pick, but in a way that wouldn't expect to see that in a list of values home and um what was the other one? Oh, order that's another one i feel like i haven't seen before yeah you? you know i you know yeah exactly i you know i i i think it's like a job security that was an interesting one for me uh i no, i mean i it's real it's real for sure but you know financial stability job security um like future generations making a difference. So there's some interesting, I mean, they're real things, but I guess I wouldn't necessarily immediately jump to say those are like values. And I don't know, maybe it's the preconception that I have of like 
those um, late '90s motivational posters you would see in a conference room somewhere. I know maybe that's kind of what I'm imagining as a um, uh, on their typical values list. But um, no, I, you know, I definition I, underneath. Yes, yes, like you know, with the eagles spread out, just like flying. Um, and <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think she kind of gets to that a little bit in the book too, where she's talking about like, you know, I, I think when people start talking about the values, they get in this like place where it's like, oh, this is going to be a cheesy conversation. And like, um, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting to think about. Um, so y'all, y'all both kind of already addressed a little bit of why you chose what, which value you did, but was there, um, uh, I guess, do you want to add anything to why you may identify with those particular values? Jamie, do you want to go? I, yeah, I can. I can jump in. I, it, it's yeah. so hard. Like I said, there's so many values on here and, and they all, several of them resonate with me and I'm sitting here looking and I see faith and I didn't mention faith. Um, you know, I think that's a uh, huge um, for me over the past several years. Um, just, just having, you know, faith in God and, and, you know, listening to what he's trying to tell me and letting him lead me. And then, you know, faith in my marriage and in myself and, you know, confidence is another one in here. And Jonathan, I don't mean to get off subject, but, you know, there's just so many um, really good ones. But like I said, leadership has just been something that I've focused on on the last year since I started the MBA program. And a lot of my classes have been leadership projects and just really developing those skills. So I think that's just like in the forefront, like in my face every day. And so I, I found myself drawn to that one very quickly on the list. Um, and trust, you know, that's something that we deal with in our personal lives. We deal with our professional lives. You know, if you have kids, um, you know, your neighbors, you deal with that with everything. And, you know, trust is something when it's broken, how do you repair it? And can you repair it? You know, and it, it's professional and it's personal. And there's just so many different ways Um you know, it's just very essential and, and uh, critical and it's delicate. I think that's the word I was looking for. It's very delicate. Absolutely. I, yeah. Um, Clayton, did you want to go or did you want me to go next? No, go for it. Uh, Cause I don't feel like I really like, I just kind of like set a few and then really didn't necessarily give it ex any explanation. Um, so, uh, or speak to those really, I, you know, I think, um, one of the ones that I, I mentioned was creativity. Um, uh, and I, you know, I don't know. I think that that's, um, I've been a many, I guess, interested in many creative endeavors. Like I, I grew up, you know, playing music, being in orchestra, doing different things. Um, and, you know, got an MFA in dance, did like film production, all kinds of, you know, graphic design, everything. That's, you know, I guess you would typically label as creativity. Um, but I think it really does speak to, me as a person um, and like oh, those experiences uh, along the way that have kind of, I guess, shaped me. Um, and so I think that's, that's one that sticks out to me, but, you know, as Jamie mentioned, I think there's a lot of, there's so many on this. Um, there's so many on this. Um, um, what do you want to say on this list here that um, it's, uh, it's hard to kind of like immediately pick and choose like what's like, Oh wait, well, this means this to me. And this means that to me. Um, um, and I, you know, I think that that's kind of, um, very true, but I mean, that's why I guess one that really sticks out to me that I identify with pretty strongly, uh, Clayton, what about you? So I don't know. I feel like kind of to what you were saying that you, this is the, the list of values. It, it's like one of those things you can pick up and read every morning and then a new one will stand out type of a thing when you first pick it up. Like in, in my thought process, I, I really try to reflect back and think of like those times when the weight of the world is just on your shoulders like which which one of these in my experiences has has like been the, the thing that either got me out or got me through um and so that's why i chose self-belief for sure and then making a difference is uh the thought process behind that is being being able to um help others through that's that's pretty much the basis of my, my logic there. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I think um, there, I don't know, one of the things that I think is really interesting that we're, we're finding here is, and that she also mentioned in the book was that we're, I guess, 
the process of thinking through this is so difficult, you know, and I think that that's, um, I was going to ask about like, you know, did you feel as though like looking at this is as hard um, as she kind of makes it out in the book? Um, Cause she, I mean, she paints, she's like, get ready. Cause this is going to be a challenge, right. To narrow this down, to look at it and feel everything. Like it's and only I mean, as hard as you make, like, as you allow yourself as it's only as hard as you allow yourself to get into the exercise, you know, you can really dismiss it. And then it's like, yeah. oh, these are very superficial. But if you really yeah. allow yourself to get into it, it, it is very challenging because it's, I mean, it gets to who you are. I mean, was that your experience? Yeah. I think no, the, I think. I. Sorry, I was going to say, I think the perfect example is what I did is I, I looked at the list and I jotted three down. And while you guys were talking, I went, wait a minute, faith <laughs> on here and all these other ones. So yeah, I think it's really, it's really difficult to narrow that down. But if you took this massive list and you tried to apply all those values to your life on a daily basis, it would be almost impossible. So you have to narrow that down to what's most important. Um, I think Brene said hers was faith and courage, maybe, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, and that's, that's pretty, pretty bold. Um you know, to, to be able to just say, these are the two, and, and this is where I'm at. And this is what I'm focusing on. I, I don't know. I can say I probably haven't done that, or I haven't done that. So I think it's interesting to try and break that down and see what my most important is. If I had to pick one, I might be in trouble. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for those that are watching on YouTube, I think we'd like to hear from you. Um, drop us your values in the chat, um, in the live chat, and why they resonate with you. Um, while, while you're doing that, we'll check on you here in a few minutes. Um, uh, so, uh, Brene touched on taking values from BS to behavior in this uh, second section of the book. Um, and her research really identified that there was only about 10% of organizations that operationalize uh, values into teachable and observable actions. So, um, I don't know, Jamie, uh, Clayton, do y'all feel like that's true? Do you feel like that's accurate? Man, man, 100%. Um, I mean, so y'all know that, um, and like early into entrepreneurship and like one of the reasons is, is that I feel like these institutions that are out now have gotten so far from their values that it's easy to be competitive against them by just maintaining integrity, maintaining your own values as a company. And it's really easy to do that. And as a, as a startup, right? Like when you're smaller, cause you, you can really get around these values, but I feel like as companies have grown or just got older, they've gotten away from their values. And because of that, like 10% is even big to me. I'm thinking like when I'm looking at these large companies or brands, who do you think is loyal? Like, and you know, in your mind, you're like, yeah, I don't really trust that brand. I'll shop there, but I don't trust them. And it, you really do see like, it's not common. Yeah. Jamie, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, you know, I'll just say, I agree a hundred percent. It's shocking and 10%. It sounds like such a small percentage, but um, from my, my viewpoint, as well as what Clayton's was, it almost sounds like a big number and that's scary. Absolutely. Why do y'all think that it might be difficult for people to translate, um, values into like lived behavior into like, you know, the everyday, why do you think there's barriers there? I think every day gets crazy. I mean, think about it. If you're wearing 14 different hats and you're trying to manage people and you have your boss and those expectations. And I just think, um, you know, it can get away from you sometimes. And, and there's a lot of things that you have to maintain, um, the time management organization and, and you just really have to hone in on what those values are and instill them from the time that you hire new employees. And you have to remind yourself, um, when you start feeling that you're straying, you have to stop. You have to remind yourself and regroup and back up and go, okay, these are the values. This is the focus and, and remind your team constantly, like this is the focus. Um, if, if you're not aligned, um, it's the culture su suffers, you know, and I've seen it happen before and, um, it, it just continues to get worse and worse and worse. And the worse it gets, the harder it is to realign and say, okay, you know, we started here and we drifted to here how do we get back to what the core, um, the core values are and how do we reset, you know, and, and sometimes it's really hard to do. Yeah. 
it is. What do you think, Jonathan? Well, you know, I, I, I think that um, you kind of, you kind of hit it right there with, you know, I guess every day, like it's, you know, it's busy. It's, it's, there's, there's just, you know, kind of this, this almost this um, repetition and this, um, this way of just getting up and doing a schedule and a thing. And so you're fighting that, right? Um, so if you, you know, you're going, okay, either like it's almost inherent inside of that schedule or that, that um, those priorities or it's not right. And so, and if it's not, and you're like, whoa, I'm feeling this, you know, imbalance, like you're talking about, like in this disconnection, like it's really hard to change your habits. And I think that's where, you know, like things like your habits or like how you're interacting or communicating and um, doing those things are super important. I think that's been eye opening for me over the last um, year and a half as I've been in the MBA program. Um, you know, it's just going, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's so much work to be done. Um, and, uh, I, you know, at least personally for me. And so I think that that's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an uphill battle and it's one that you have to choose, I think, to fight, um, because there are barriers there. And it's like, I think it's found in that like habit in those repetitive actions, you know, uh, what do you think? Clayton? I, I literally, the word that was going to be the first on my mouth was going to be repetition. Um, when you ask that question, just because, I mean, at least that's how it is for me and how I see it for other people. It's like, we're, we're very habitual creatures. Um, it's like these, this is like something that I, I focus on a lot because I, you know, I do a lot of self-reflection anyways. And I have this fear that I'll go a long way, but the wrong way. And mm -hmm. so I'm always like checking which way I, I um, metaphorically am aimed. And, um, and then from there, it's like getting that repetition, building that streak, you know, one day then two days and three days. Um, and so I definitely feel that that is why it's difficult for people to translate values and to live behavior. I mean, really the same points y'all mentioned is that the lack of repetition and then just like you said, it's an uphill battle. And so when you have to choose, um, it's not easy. It's really not easy to, to change. Yeah. Um, for real. And for real. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we kind of covered my next question a little bit um, uh, about specific pain points or barriers um, in that, that habit um, and um, those repetition things and, you know, moving away or with and getting too far down the road of these organizational ruts, I guess you could say. Um, but um, I guess one of the the specific areas that Brene touched on when it comes to living in our values is the idea of feedback. Um, and she was very specific in saying that um, like providing and uh, receiving feedback is probably one of the biggest challenges that we face. Um, so I guess my initial question for you in that is how do you feel when you're being approached uh, when you're approached, not when you're being approached, but when you're approaching a, a feedback conversation, what kind of emotions does it bring up in you beforehand? Because I know for me, like I, <laughs> like I'm, if I'm approaching that kind of situation, like I, like the anxiety is through the roof. What do y'all, what do y'all think? So Jonathan, do you mean receiving feedback or giving feedback for both? It, it could, I'd phrase it purposely so they could be either. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, how, how would you, uh, want to take that what, what immediately first came to mind well I mean I think it's like what Brene talks about is having the courage um to you know go with your integrity and if you are a manager or boss and you have an employee that's you know you've got to have a real conversation with about their performance you know I when I manage the large team, I always like to start with a positive, you know, like what are they doing right? Because you never want to beat an employee down to the point where it's like, okay, they just feel like I suck. Like I can't do anything right. What, what's the deal? Maybe this isn't for me because I don't like to give up on people. Um, I think that, you know, skills can be learned. Um, personality can't, you know, it, it's just one of those things. And so, um, you know, I want to start with a positive and let them know, hey, you're doing a really great job at this, this and this. But I want to bring to attention, you know, these specific things and, you know, talk to me about them. Are you struggling with anything? What do you think? And once I kind of get where their mentality is, you know, it helps me see, OK, you know, here's how we need to address this further, you know, instead of just 
making it feel like an attack. Um, for me personally, like when I'm getting feedback, I mean, I just want somebody to be real with me, you know, tell me what I'm doing right. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. You know, approach it. Like I said, I mean, I, I don't mean it from a standpoint of coddling. I just mean it from a standpoint of, Hey, let's build people up instead of beat them down. Um, let's recognize what we're doing right and the positive in the situation. And then let's address what needs to be addressed and let's fix it. You know, I mean, I would rather work with people than at people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. sense. What do you think, Clayton? How do you feel when you're going into a, you're like, I'm about to go into a feedback conversation. What, what am I, what's going through your head? I'll be honest. Like I was, I'm going to give you the initial answer, but after Jamie's, I was going to try to say something more confident. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, no, I, uh, I don't enjoy <clears throat> the giving part. Um, I mean, y'all have both been on a team with me and I, I really like to be surrounded by folks that like are just as motivated. And so there's the only feedback would be like working collaboratively together. But when I'm thinking of giving feedback to someone, I'm thinking of like be having to tell them that they've done something that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. And the, that elicits, I guess, anxiety. Uh, but on the receiving end, I love to receive feedback. Like I'll, I'll ask people like, what sucked about this? Like, you know, after I deliver something, like, what sucked about that? And, and tell me everything bad. Um, so that's mine. What about you? You know, honestly, I, you know, I feel the same. Like, you know, I think that going through, um, being in a creative role, uh, I mean, you, you like your job is to make things right. You know, and I, and I think that it extends beyond creative roles, but, um, you know, you're making, you're outputting all the time. Um, and you're having to take input from people. Um, and, um, you're, um, constantly producing something. And then the deliverable is usually 90% of the time, not right. It's not a hundred percent of what they were looking for or wanted, you know, so like, I think growing up into that culture, um, like, I don't know, like at first, like, you know, as an artist and as different things, like feedback is terrible. You're just like, I poured my heart and soul into this and you think it's terrible. Why would you, why would you say that to me? Um, you know, or why, why does this, why? No, I, I, that's my choice. That's not your choice. I don't think that's right. You know? And so it's really hard, you know, uh, to, <laughs> to take that, but also mm -hmm. like, you know, as someone that takes it, uh, you know, leading a team of creative people, like how do you then go knowing that that's how you hate receiving it, going to them and saying, Hey, I know you like literally got so excited about making this and you got so excited about this specific aspect. And that's the one thing that they hate. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's um, it, it's soul crushing. And so I think you're, you know, uh, it's to, it's to turn around to a team and go, Hey, we got to change that because that's what they've asked for. And that's what we need to do um, because, you know, we're a service and we, you know, want to provide good service. Um, what, so, um, uh, well, how does someone, this is kind of like to fold off of this, Jonathan, Jamie, how does, how did, did you experience that like us? Or have you always ha been able to have those feelings of like confidence before? Oh no, it took many, many, many years. Um, so I started out in restaurant management. And so that throws you in the fire. I mean, it just, <laughs> like you just jump in head first and you go. Um, I managed a, a full kitchen staff of uh, Hispanic males, culturally very different than me. I was only 23 years old at the time. Um, so a lot of uh, communication barriers, there was uh, cultural differences. I mean, it was very, very challenging at best. Um, from there, I moved into the front of house and I managed servers of all different ages, some younger than me, some older than me. I developed a training program. I mean, I've just really had some great mentors along the way. Um, and, and that's what I would suggest to anybody. I mean, when you're in a difficult spot or you're having, you know, you work hard on a project and you're just really let down because someone's not happy with your work, you know, with that situation, it's a little different. You know, you've got to find out why the client's not happy or were they expecting something different? What was their vision? And I think on the front end, it's, it's a lot of questions. You know, you can't read minds. Um, that's yeah. the biggest thing is like, you really have to pull information out of people sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Clayton, for me, it, it's been, you know, I'm in my thirties now. Um, I'm on my third like professional job. 
Um, my second professional job, I was in it for almost nine years. Um, and I led a massive team. I, I ran a full um, kitchen. I worked for a 18,000 seat concert venue. I had 28 nonprofit organizations that reported to me. I, I had uh, managers reporting to me. I mean, it, it just, you just develop over time. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't just show up one day. I can assure you that you're going to make so many mistakes. Um, you know, throughout the MBA program, when I said, you know, leadership, something I've been working on and learning more about, you know, I haven't had to lead a team since I left the arena. So it's been about four years and I miss it. I miss it every day, mm. but I'm learning so much and I made so many mistakes. Um, and now learning about them, I'm like, oh, well, I can recognize them myself. And I have wonderful essay answers to questions on tests now, um, you know, through those experiences. I'm like, okay, here's how I'll handle that. But here's what I can do better and learn from that in the future. So for sure. Just get ready to make mistakes is all I can tell you. <laughs> it's happen. And it's okay, uh, you know, but yeah. admit your mistakes. When you do something wrong, you know, or you make a bad decision, own it. You know, that's the best way to handle it. Own it. I messed up. You know, I'm sorry. Let's move forward. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Good. That's, good. that's that's really good, good advice. Words. Yeah. That's all you can do. For sure. Clayton, you have been president of the NBA SA, and I've been so impressed with you since I first started um, being a part of the organization. You have no reason to have any challenges with confidence at all. I appreciate that. For real. <laughs> Both of you. For real. Well, I also appreciate that. Um, what I've got a, a, a kind of an interesting follow up question to that, um, uh, Jamie, is like, can you recall maybe some of the most engaging conversations you've had that have been a feedback conversation? And what was that like? Um, and what, what made it great? Mm. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Um, you know, in different roles or when I was at the arena, um, those are more, I hate to say numbers based, but you know, you're looking more at revenues, you're looking more at, um, yearly numbers and, and what that progress looks like and receiving bonuses off of that. So there's, you know, I don't think I've ever had a bad review. Um, I know I haven't ever had a bad review. Um, and, and rarely, I hate to say there's rarely been times where it's been like you really need to improve on this I don't think there's ever been a time and that that sounds horrible I'm, I'm butchering this I'm sorry but you know because we can all improve at stuff but I just have a very high motivation of self-improvement and you know like I said a minute ago I'm one of those that when I make mistakes and I catch it I own it and I'm the first one to walk up to you and go Jonathan I did this I'm so sorry here's what I'm doing to fix it and so that's one thing about me is if, if I mess up, I'm going to find a way to fix it and I'm going to let you know. Um, you know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm just going to be honest. Um, when I was at well, a and Corpus Christi, you know, I, my first role there, I was planning events for the president's office. Um, my, my title was stewardship and, do and donor relations coordinator. And it was my first time working in higher education. It was a total different world, total different industry change. Um, a lot of challenges came from that. And I had to learn on the fly. And so it wasn't specifically in like a feedback or like a, a review type situation, but just tips along the way. You know, I had to learn in higher education, it's doctor so-and-so, you know, and, and that was, I mean, it sounds so simple, but if you've never worked in higher education, you don't think of those things. And so everything was much more formal all of a sudden where I had been in a very relaxed environment, even with um, clients and vendors and stuff where I was before. So, you know, I mean, there's just little tidbits of feedback you take along the way and you make mistakes, you learn and you keep going. Absolutely. No, it, it reminds me a lot of kind of the, the idea that you're, you're talking about with the, the positive conversations and the most engaging ones. Like it's almost kind of the self-fulfilling thing that you're talking about a little bit. Like I know for me, like um, in a lot of the really great engaging conversations that I've had, you know, with people giving me feedback, um, I think it's a similar thing where it's like, I'm really coming to the table almost with the like, here's what I know is wrong. Here's what needs to be done. Here's what, you know, I'm coming to the table and they're almost on, on the other side of the table. They're sitting here going, well, make sure that you look at all these great things. 
you know, understand this, understand this, understand this. I mean, and there's advice in that conversation, you know, I think the, at some point, the, the vulnerability of coming to the table with where I've messed up um, provides an opportunity for them to turn around and say, hey, well, here's some advice we can give on that. Um, but also, you're doing great in these other things. You know, so it provides this really great, I guess, um, uh, conversation uh, at some point. Um, and uh, at least that's been my experience. What, what about you, Clayton? I guess it's very similar really um, to yours. And I'm finding that, <laughs> that I've said that like multiple times now. Uh, I, yeah, you, all, you already really said everything or that I would relate to. Okay. <laughs> that's totally fine. I mean, no, I think that's what's interesting. I, I think that is interesting is that we've all kind of had a similar experience um, in that. And I wonder if that's something that Brene would be, um, you know, like, aha, it's this reason why or this is going on, you know, uh, that's, she's also found in her research as well. Um, but um, I don't know, is there anything that you took away from this particular section of the book that you would um, potentially incorporate in uh, feedback conversations when you're giving feedback to someone else? Clayton, like, I'll let you jump in first. <laughs> just get getting to it is probably what I'm going to take from this like getting to the point of giving and giving feedback um I just stepped into one of those roles and so that's uh something I've been challenged with recently so just getting to the plate in the sense you know just being able to give the feedback I mean I'm good at like, I'm good at getting there quickly but then I don't really have the the knowledge base to reference yet of how to give. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good at the taking feedback part though. I think somewhere and I can't remember if it's this specific section or not, but Brene talks about, it's like eight seconds of being uncomfortable. And so she was mm. telling her husband, it's, it's like riding a bull. It's, it's eight seconds. All I've got to do is make it eight seconds. And I can't remember exactly um, what she was talking about in that, but that's kind of what comes to mind with what Clayton was saying is that it's a very short amount of time that you have to feel uncomfortable. And as soon as you get the words out of your mouth, it, it's kind of like a, a release, you know, like the anxiety starts to ease because now it's a conversation. Like it's, it's the elephant in the room and then it's okay. Well now it's a conversation and we, and we move forward. Um, yeah. I think you're right on. I, that was actually, I think that's from this section. I remember uh, uh, I was listening to the audiobook on the, on a drive this weekend. And so like, I remember it specifically it's from this section. So um, yeah, no. And she was totally talking about that. She's like, yeah, the eight seconds of awkwardness um, and about how like, you know, it's this, like, if you can make it through, like you said, the eight seconds, then you're going to be fine. And um, it's going to be fine. And y'all will figure it out, you know, um, uh, whatever the situation is really. But I think, yeah, you, I think you nailed it on the head with that. Clayton, did you have anything more to add with that? No, that, that resonated for sure though. <laughs> it's like, I'm just sitting there thinking, yeah, eight seconds. And then like after about a minute, there's another eight seconds. <laughs> it's like, so it puts you back on the bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. I think the other thing that for me that was really kind of um, was uh, I think in, in cup, uh, like coupling that with the eight seconds is like uh, kind of tying in the value aspect, like, you know, knowing your values, but also knowing other people's values. And so like um, to really kind of, I almost like shape, right. And so like, how do you help understand what's important to them, but also what's important to you and how you kind of, I don't know, we've done a lot, we've thought, talked a lot, of, a lot about that in management classes, I think over the past a little bit um, is, you know, really knowing yourself um, and knowing um, and understanding other people and then figuring out how to, I don't know, cater and individualize towards different kind of people. So I think that's kind of, she mentioned some stuff like that, I think in the book. And um, I know that kind of stuck up for me a little bit as well. I'm looking at this specific section. I have my book open here as we're talking and it says, I think carefully about how I want to show up in the conversation. And I think that speaks volumes um, because you really got to prepare, um, you know, and, and think through that conversation and almost rehearse in a mirror if you have to, 
to get yourself, um, you know, confident enough to sit down and have those difficult conversations or, and, and times receive them, you know, you may know you screwed up, you may know you're fixing to get the talk, you know, and just preparing yourself for that. Um, and, and thinking about what that conversation looks like. So you're not just walking in more blind or winging it, you know, I mean, give people more credit and respect than that, that you've really prepared and, you know, it's a, it's a good intention. It may not, it may be an uncomfortable conversation, but it's a mm. good intended conversation. So. Absolutely. That's, I think um, that's definitely an oh, so action. That's like definitely an actionable takeaway. That was going to be my next question was what practical advice do you have um, in these particular areas? Like, you know, whether that's um, for living your values or for, you know, giving or taking uh, feedback. Um, do you have any, I would say I elaborate for, on that thought for living values is a, uh, I, I definitely, I have a young career so far, but, uh, just being who you are 100 mm. percent and then if you're not accepted it's just not the place for you like i uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in that in terms of values um just being 100 percent myself and if y you'll begin to attract those like you um or, or at least a group and finding somewhere you can be comfortable to where you can grow yourself um and that's where i'm at now but i am trying to push through some of these other things that we were just discussing. So no advice on that part. I just think everybody brings their own unique values and being different from someone else or thinking different from someone else is what ultimately creates an awesome team and an awesome working environment because that allows me to learn from that person and that person to learn from me and vice versa. Yeah. So um, it makes it interesting. Yeah, it does. It really does. What about you, John, then? Well, you know, I think that, um, yeah, I think it's a similar idea of, like, being true to yourself, right? You know, maybe that that idea. Um, and because I think a lot of people either don't know who they are, they're going in this journey of, like, you know, I don't know. I guess I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm in my 20s and my 30s. I have no idea. Like, um, those kinds of things. And um, I... Um, I don't know, like you get to this point where like, it's, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I'm lost here. And like, you know, finding uh, just like, almost just focusing on that. It's like, okay, well, you know what? Let's start at the basics, right? Let's look at a list. Let's think about who I am. Let's think about where I've been. What's my story? What's these things? Um, and then taking time to like sort through that um, to me, organization of those ideas and of information is kind of important. Um, but that's also me. Um, it's not everybody, but I think that's kind of a practical piece is how you organize and go about organizing things that make things, um, um, better for you. Um, and also make it more true to yourself, um, for sure. But, um, let's see one, my one last more, my one last question is, uh, how can we create a better environment for productive feedback conversations? I think that's, you know, what I said before is really uh, thinking about the conversation, preparing for the conversation in advance. And yeah, I mean, sometimes you're going to get in the conversation and it's going to go left field. Like you, you didn't know it was going to go that way, but you know, I, I think it's um, being careful to not be reactional you know, and if it's a very difficult conversation and it, and you have to walk away from it um, for a certain time, I think that's okay. You can walk away and you can come back because if two people end up angry, you're not going to solve anything, you know, mm -hmm. and if it's a positive feedback, you know, I think that opens the door and, you know, not just that positive feedback builds trust, but it helps build you up, um, you know, to, to really, dive into more responsibility or want to learn more or, you know, okay, well, I'm doing this great. I'm going to keep doing this, but okay. On, on this area, you know, and, and getting that feedback, Hey, I'm working on this, but I feel like I could have done better by this. What are your thoughts? You know, it just opens up that line of communication. Um, that's just essential. Yeah. What about you, Clayton? Uh, 
I, I still I need I still need a second. I'm thinking through something. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll I'll uh, yeah no no that's fine. Um, I'll I'll so, uh, so I'll hop in. Tag you in. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, so uh, I you know I think that. One of the things that I'm, for me personally, um, and I think this probably applies to, to people as well, but I know for me personally, maybe I'll speak from there. Um, listening. Shutting mm -hmm. up and listening. Yeah. Um, you know, creating an inventor environment uh, is, you know, say, you know, it's kind of that, it's like eight seconds, like say the thing, say, say the one thing, and then just shut up for eight seconds and then sit there and listen to them respond, <laughs> you know, um, and then be okay, you know, and then it'd be, and then it'd be fine. Um, but like active listening, not like, um, not like I'm waiting to like provide an answer or some stuff like that. Cause I do that a lot. And I, cause my mind processes so quickly. Um, I, it's hard for me to sit there and actually like intently listen and really take a moment to fully take in what someone else has said. Um, so I think for me and the way that I deal with things, I think that that's something that um, I'm still working on and I'm, you know, I'm getting better at, um, uh, and creating a better environment for, you know, my colleagues and my coworkers as we, you know, we, we meet with, I don't know, on a, on a timely, uh, on a weekly basis, you know, we're sitting there and we're, we're going around the, you know, round Robin around the room and we're talking about different projects and we're different things and really taking time to listen to, um, what it is that they're, um, they're saying, um, and then asking qu the questions that they're asking too, like, what does it mean? Why are they asking this? Is there something deeper? Is there going on? Is there, you know, whatever. I mean, if I take the time to listen, am I not going to help them um, better? Like, is it not going to be a more impactful, um, I think, in the long run um, to do that? So I think that's kind of just a really basic and practical thing is just a listen. I know a lot of people say that, but I, I don't know. I think it's really, really, really relevant. Jonathan, but. I think that's perfect and perfectly said, um, you know, that that's one of the key things in a conversation is you got to say your piece, stop, listen, you know, for it to keep going. I think that's um, ridiculously important really, because if you don't stop and listen to what they're saying, you may think that there's a problem, you know, or, you know, we're here to discuss an issue and, and give feedback that may be positive or negative, but there might be a bigger picture. And if you don't stop and listen um, intently, you know, you, you're not going to interpret that or you're going to miss that. And those could be some key um, details that you need to know. So, Clayton. Yeah, that's. Uh, I swear I'm not going to steal both of your answers again this time. Um, <laughs> I do really, I do really think that that that's it though. Like at that at that level, and so I'm going to add to it in that like the things that can be done um, for, for a, a group, like for the environment, I feel like are when I've experienced, when I've had these experiences, when you've been in these environments where you can receive pr uh, feedback, positive, negative, uh, either way, it's productive. It's been when there's like a shared goal. So you actually have like a, a team feeling to where everyone is, is pushing towards the same thing. And so getting that feedback it doesn't hurt if it's something that is an insecurity of yours, for example, because you know that person's on the front line, for example, with you pushing this this common mission or, or goal forward. Um, so, so not just to steal what you have said, like with I think the listening those things go into that, right? Uh, but how can we create the better environment? Is I think it's get, getting the people together. Um, around something that they, they're interested in advancing. And then something I think she said at the very beginning of the book is that resonated with me is um, not to listen to the cheap seats. It was something like mm -hmm. that. So, so know who is giving this feedback because uh, if, if they're giving, getting it, I mean, you can take the feedback and if it's not productive, you just let it go, right? Uh, that's, so that's another way, I, in, my, in my head at least, how I would try to better the environment for that. Clayton, are you able to do that? Just if it's not, if it's from the cheap seats, are you able to just just let it shift on by or does it stay? Yeah, with you? no, uh, opinions don't really s stick with me. <laughs> that's an awesome quality. I, that's something I struggle with is it's not so much opinions. I, mean, I guess it kind of is, but you know, I, I let too much of what people think uh, matter to me when sometimes it doesn't, you know, I mean, you own your value, yeah. you own your integrity, and you know that you're operating in those lines and what's outside of those lines, it, it doesn't matter, you know? So 
it goes back to like the value that I wrote in. It's, it's something that's really fundamental to me is self-belief. And I, I really think that once you've made up your mind of what you want, um, it's probably like a, uh, something about confirmation bias as well. But regardless, I, I just fully believe it. You know, I have a dream and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And people are like, no, that's never going to happen. And be like, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> and I just try to will it into the world. Um, just blind confidence, I guess, in those in those aspects. Absolutely. What about you, John? Well, you got the blind I mean, confidence. You know, I I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I think that uh, you know, um, I think that you you said a couple of things like uh, that. I was like, oh, like um, you know, talking about how people come around an idea, and I was like, oh, you mean like a value? <laughs> they come around a value. Um, so it's kind of yeah, it's of organizations. How, that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, and it's <laughs> it just struck me that you were. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I had to. I had to almost chuckle a little bit when you were saying that, but hold my laughter in because I was like, oh my gosh, that's totally what she's talking about. Uh, <laughs> in this book. But um, anyway, uh, I think. Uh, as our uh, discussion comes to a close, um, I'd like to thank both of y'all for being here today to join me courageously as we dug into what it means to live our values. Um, I'd also like to thank those of you tuning in that have joined us in reading together. If you haven't had a chance to pick up the book yet, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, and you're welcome to join us next time as we wrap up the book. Uh, we'd also like to encourage you to tune back in tomorrow for our virtual panel discussion on wealth management. Um, let's see, we've got a panel promo here to show you kind of our little slide for tomorrow. Um, and, uh, the panel discussion is going to be moderated by Jamie. So she'll be back on tomorrow, uh, talking with, uh, two folks, uh, that are going to provide insight and advice on major topics, trends, and inflection points as they relate to wealth management. So be sure to tune in. Um, To all the College of Business students, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on what we're releasing, join the MBA Student Association, and push yourself to engage with others. We've got information about how to get involved down below. Lastly, I'd like to leave you all with a quote from Brene. We don't fully see people until we know their values. So take time to identify your own values, to understand what others value, and know yourself and know others. Thank you.